my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, July 23rd, 2018. Today, I want to talk to you about the artistic flat pattern wire. This wire is really cool because you get the qualities of artistic wire where you don't have to worry about the wire turning as far as, you know, colors or anything like that but you get the cool look of an actual pattern to your wire like this without having to put this through a rolling mill to put your own pattern on there. So it's really, really fun to work with. The only thing I will say is I'm gonna be using a whole lot of tools today. Basically, I pulled out almost every metal tool thing that I had to work with today. So it's gonna sound like I'm using a lot, <clears throat> but some of this, you may not use, um, so that's no problem. Uh, a lot of you, you may have some of this stuff. So, um, you know, don't feel like you're gonna have to buy nine million things to work with something. You may have something else that works. So the flat memory wire, or the, I'm gonna say memory wire a lot. I can then tell you because I just did flat memory wire a few weeks ago. But the flat pattern wire is really cool. It is about a 21 gauge wire itself. It's four by six by 0.58 millimeter is your sizing and um, thickness there. It comes in two different kinds. There's actually six patterns, but we sell the assorted packs. So you have a vine dot pattern and you have a geometric line pattern. So each pack has three pieces in the pack and they are six inches each. So you can cut these in half, you can um, use it by itself to make a bangle. There's lots of different things you can do with it. I actually made a ring with the flat pattern wire here that I'm gonna show you today. But um, more so than a ring, I wanna show you how we had so much fun making this into a pendant um, when I did my Try It Tuesday at the shop last week. So, here's a list of all the stuff that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using a beadalon triangle file, a pair of bending pliers. These are like bangle bending pliers here. They have a curved inside. I'm gonna be using a metal hole punch, uh, a good pair of metal shears to cut this flat pattern wire. It's a very, very dense wire, so do not use your good cutters or you will ruin them when you try to cut this stuff. I'm gonna be using a basic round nose plier as well as a metal ring mandrel, head pin, 20 gauge wire, an eight millimeter crystal, and then I'm gonna have my hammer on hand just in case I need it as well. So let's go ahead and get so started. So today I'm gonna be using the geometric line pack so you can see how cool your textures are on these and I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this piece in half. Okay so it is a six inch piece as you can see here. So using my metal shears I'm just going to kind of pinch right there so I can see where I need to cut and then I'm going to cut the wire. With my half piece of wire, I'm going to now take and I'm going to form it over my metal ring mandrel. Now, when you form it over, you want to form it over true to the size that you would wear. So if you wear a size eight, you want to form it over the eight and vice versa. If you want to make it um, bigger, to make a pendant like I'm going to show you today, you can pretty much make whatever size you want. Definitely wouldn't make a five, but up to an eight, nine, whatever you want. Now, because this is patterned, what's going to happen is when you actually bend it in place, it may um, V shape instead of getting that nice round shape like we want. So that's why we have our cutter, or I'm sorry, our um, hammer in place. So we are just going to form it over the pliers until they meet, just like this. 
You want to try to keep them as even as possible here as you work. Well, these, this one bent pretty well. Didn't have to really use my hammer. If it would not have bent well, leaving it on my mandrel, I would have then take and hammered it right where I would have needed to um, to get that rounded shape. But that rounded shape looks perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my flat nose pliers and right now this piece is just bent like this. I'm going to come down and you can see here I'm putting my plier all the way to the back and this wire is basically touching here. And I'm just gonna bend it just like this. I'm gonna bend it back a little bit. So grab it all the way, bend it back a little bit. There we go. So now when you kind of put it together, it's gonna look more like this. Okay, I'm gonna use a rather large stone today. I believe this is a 10 millimeter rondelle. So when I actually punch my holes, that's going to work out really, really well for where I want this piece to be and what I want it to look like. Now, if I was going to do a ring like I have on here, when you pinch it, so if I wanted, let's say, a size 8, of course, that is going to be way too big. So I would need to trim this down and then cut it, okay? but since I'm gonna do the little pendant here today, I want to punch a hole right where the bend is here on each side. So I wanna punch a hole here and here. So this is where my metal hole punch is gonna come into place. I'm gonna come right in there and I'm gonna punch a hole. Now here's the thing. I have got, my metal shears um, have got some age to them. I use these things a lot, so if, they don't come off easy if you've had good uses to yours and they don't kind of come off this pattern wire easy you may just have to jiggle jiggle the thing a little bit to get it to come off sometimes it's easy sometimes it's not there we go okay so i have my piece ready to go this is where my 20 gauge wire is going to come in <clears throat> i'm going to use my cutters i'm going to cut me some of this 20 gauge wire and I'm going to make a wrapped loop on this end. And I'm not going to go over so much of how to make a wrapped loop because I have lots of videos of those. But I am going to make a very small loop. So I want to use the tips of my pliers here as I make this loop. Okay, so I'm going to bend it. And then flat nose pliers, where are you? Then I'm going to wrap this wire a couple of times. And again, I'm going to use these Mac Daddy pliers just because I don't have my other ones out right yet. Okay. Now, once you've got that done, I'm going to put it through one side, put my crystal on, or whatever you want. It can be any kind of bead. I used um, some of the matte glass, sea glass, or the matte glass rondelles that we've got on our website to make this one, so it can really be anything. Okay, so I've got this, and now I'm going to make a loop on this side. Now, we all were laughing when I did this at Try It Tuesday because I literally would wrap so hard on this wire that I would unwrap it over here. So just be careful as you wrap, not to wrap it so tightly that you're gonna unwrap the other side. But you are gonna have to wrap it until it kind of meets there. Okay, let me find my shears, here we go. So that now, this is what you've got. So at this point, I'm gonna get my metal hole punchers again and I'm going to kind of find the center of this bad boy or 
or shall I say where I want the center to be. There we go. And I'm going to punch a hole here. Now I'm going to use a head pin and I'm going to stick a head pin up through the center to the outside. And then I'm going to place a crystal here on the top and then make a larger size wrapped loop so I can use it as my bell. Now if I want to, you can also use the bell making pliers to make a whatever size bell you would like for your necklace or pendant. And now I can trim this. And now I have a really fun pendant using this flat pattern wire. If you wanted to, you could make an identical one and make this into an earring as well. It would make a really, really pretty earring that you could wear and it would be really, um, really artistic and different. Now, another thing that you can do with this wire is you can use the bending pliers and they are here. You can use the bending pliers to actually bend this wire to make it look like this so that you could do a bottom part and then attach beads or stones or whatever you want along the top. So to use the bending pliers, they're really, really easy. All you're going to do is take the wire, put it in the very end here and press and then come down and press. You just keep bringing it up and pressing the wire every little bit here and it's going to make it into this bangle type shape that you would want. Now for me, that is not going to work for me. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist and this is not going to work. Okay going to come right off if you do it like that. So there's a couple of things that you would want to do if you want to actually attach beads or if you have a super tiny wrist and you want to make this into a bangle. It's just a matter of bending your wire in some more to make it into the oval shape that you would need for a bangle. Now the one thing that I might suggest if you do that these ends are pretty sharp, so you would actually want to take your needle file or your triangle file and file some of these edges off so that it's not as sharp on your wrist. You can also, if you wanted to do like I did here, use your bending pliers to make a loop. And you could, if you purchase the um, uh, what are they called? The uh, memory wire bending pliers that I showed a few weeks ago, those will absolutely work as well because you get a really, really nice loop here. I'm going to do the same thing on this side here. Okay, so you could do something like that and then you would have a really really nice bangle. This is going to be really good for somebody who has like a seven inch wrist. If you have a smaller wrist than that you would definitely need to do a little bit of work to it but for someone who has a seven inch wrist it would work out really really well on this type wire and it would just be a matter of bringing this wire in some more and forming it some more to be the bangle that you would want. And you can see the difference here just kind of bending in these sides a little bit what you get. So what I want to do is I want to grab a little bit of um, some beads to show you how I would actually do the top of this one to make it into okay, a bangle. So I went rummaging around downstairs and found these really pretty 19 by 72 millimeter mermaid pendants that we had. And I took my bending pliers and I just started on one end of her body and I just started pressing her until 
I got this rounded shape. And I'm actually going to, you can see this is the same wire that I had just a second ago. I've got my loop here. But I've went ahead and I've opened this loop, trimmed it a little bit, and filed it because she will actually hook in to that side for the closure of my bracelet. And then I need to put a hole right here in her tail. And I'm going to make a bail, a really cool looking bail, to kind of bring this all together. So let me see here. We need to put a hole. There we go. All right, let me work her off here. There we go. Okay, so I have a hole in the tail. Now, I'm going to use my really cool bell making pliers here. And I need to make a loop that goes one direction, and then the other half needs to go the other direction that she so she will lay correctly. So I'm going to take the wire, and I'm going to wrap it one leg like this. And I'll actually go ahead and check because I want the wire to kind of go around like this. So I can make this a little bit smaller, I believe. Not have to make it that big. So I'm going to come in one here. And make my loop. Here we go. Much better. Now, there we go. That'll work out really, really well. Okay, so I wanna make sure I get that loop closed here. And then, I've gotta take this wire, and we actually have to bend it back because it needs to be opposite. And you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and kinda of trim this wire. And make me a loop here. I'll use this smaller one. There we go. So you can see one goes one way and one goes the other way. And that's because it has to hook into this side. And then we have to open this side. And her tail will hook into this side. And I might actually have to make this loop a little bit larger to, a, oh, nope, there we go. Okay, so now I will close that loop so that way when I wear it, now it'll be just like this. So, and I mean, gosh, like I don't have enough bracelets on already. And there we go. So you can see, now I have the flat pattern wire, and I might have to loop this little girl over just a little bit more here. Yeah, I can loop that just a little more. And then I will have a really cool bracelet. Now, a couple more little projects I wanna show you, just really easy. Another thing you can do is you can actually cut your wire and make a, just a simple earring. All I did with this one here is I have taken and I cut this in half. I cut a, a half of a half, so this is an inch and a half here. I punched a hole on each end, and you can see there where I've got my holes punched. Okay, I have, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you these really cool, uh, like my bracelet that I have on here. I showed you these fine encasements so here's a small one. I'm using, this is the, I think this is the light Colorado Topaz Shimmer is the eight millimeter chaton that I'm using. And you can find these on our website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. But all I gotta do is lay that in. I'm gonna fold down the corners. So you got that, and then we will attach this to the bottom loop with a jump ring. And this is a four millimeter jump ring. Okay. 
And then for the top, I've used a little piece of 20 gauge wire and started an eye pin. So I'm going to attach it to the loop here up top. Thread on a four millimeter bicone. And again, I believe that my bicone I'm using is the Light Colorado Topaz Shimmer. And then I'm just gonna make a loop. So it's like this. Now I just got to attach the ear hook. So those are really, really quick and easy. And you can make these whatever length you want them just by cutting your wire longer or shorter. Again, the wire, pattern wire part are an inch and a half. So these are some really easy and quick earrings that you could do. And one other ring I want to show you is just this really simple ring. Um, if you, I actually already have one on this finger, I would show it to you there. It's just really easy. All we have to do is take the pattern wire. And again, we're going to be using our metal ring mandrel. Depending on what size you need, it's just a matter of taking the wire and bending the wire around. But when you bend it around, you want to cross it, okay? So you don't want it to be come together. You want it to cross. And again, whatever size you want, you would make it that size. Okay, so I want a pretty good size one. There we go. Okay, so these little pieces here, you can see they're still straight. So my bending pliers come in handy here because I can just take it now and I can bend that. And then I'll take my files. You can bend it down a little bit. Then it's just a matter of taking your files, filing these corners down, and you can bend them and twist them a little bit if you want to, so they'll be a little bit further out. Bend this down. Bend this down. And then you can see, you can pull it out a little bit like that, and then you get a really fun and easy ring. The biggest thing I would say about these, make sure you take the time to file these ends off and get the little spurs or any little part that is rough, get those off or this is gonna scratch somebody's finger and it's gonna hurt pretty bad. So you'll wanna work and actually file these down until you get a nice either rounded or um, beveled edge like I have here on this one. So you can see there are lots of fun things that you can use with this patterned wire. So, I hope you enjoyed learning how to use the new flat pattern wire that the Artistic Wire Company has come out with. Um, the really neat thing about all of these projects that I showed you today is that I used um, literally just three pieces. So I used my pack and I was able to make two bangle bracelets, a pair of earrings, a ring, a pendant, and so you get a good many projects out of one pack of wire. We do have all the wire and the tools available on our website, which can be found at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. We also have the mermaids. Um, that was a 19 by 72 millimeter mermaid. And we had the eight millimeter Chaton prong settings. Um, a two pack is $1.75 on those. So just so you know, any kits or products talked about in this video are sold on a temporary basis. Colors and kits are subject to change at any time. Please be advised that any promotion or sale is date specific and may not be available at the time that you watch this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.